Hey, hey, everybody. It's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. I'm going to move quite quickly here. So if you if it's too fast for you, the links will be down in the comment section below. All right. This is the Twitter page for Tech Circle. About 10 hours ago, they uploaded a interview that they did with Mr. Naveen Gupta. He is the managing director for Ripple in India. And the article can be found on the Tech Circle website. It's a very good article. Ripple's WhatsApp-like blockchain superhighway can replace Swift. And we know that Ripple is providing a better and faster alternative to Swift. India has a $70 billion market when it comes to remittances. So it's really quite huge. And they are growing uh, quickly. Soon, he says, the banks of India will be increased. And yes, they are using XRP, and he cites the use case between the United States and Mexico. Did you know that SWIFT has an error and failure rate, error or failure rate of 6%? So can you imagine within the billions of dollars being transferred in cross-border payments every day, if you have a problem with 6%, uh, it's just, just unbelievable the problems they are unwinding every day. Okay, this is AFP. It's a website of the Association of Financial Professionals. There is a whole archive of podcasts which are really good. There is one in particular I want to highlight, and that is with Marcus Treacher. He is a Ripple employee. It's a 33-minute podcast, and if you don't know Mr. Treacher, he is a 30-year professional. He started with Accenture, but then later worked for Citi. He also worked for Swift and HSBC. He got to know Ripple because he was a Ripple customer, and he talks about how he was so impressed with their quality. Uh, I really like the way he explains that BTC, XRP, and Ethereum each have their own unique use cases. So I am so happy to hear that it's not a my coin against your coin. No, we all have a very big role to play in improving this planet with the technology and there is a spot for everyone so i am just really happy and i want to point that out that he also feels the same way i do uh, when he went uh, to work with Ripple, he said that it was really invigorating. The pace is invigorating still. He feels liberated with all the young, fresh thinkers. So I think it's a really good insight to the culture inside the Ripple uh, labs, if you will. He talks about the digital assets are solving the liquidity problem. In particular, XRP is powerful to solve this. Uh, there are $25 trillion locked up in order for those cross-border payments to happen. And this is really the beauty of XRP in being able to help in that liquidity. So he also talks about the teams that are in Singapore, in Sydney, New York, Tokyo, Seoul, and Mumbai, to name a few. And at the 23-minute mark, he talks about SEB Bank in Sweden, that they are uh, using the Ripple network to move just under, so far, a billion B, a billion dollars. And week by week, that size is increasing. And then when you get to minute 31, he talks about the focus for the next 18 months, and they have a strong discipline to uh, stay focused on building up uh, customers and scaling up to every continent, multi-country connections to move value and using XRP. That's the game plan. So he is quoted as saying that Ripple is 
pioneering work on the liquidity and how we can put the liquidity solutions in place like XRP. This is a very interesting report. It is the 2018, it was just released in July, Liquidity Survey Report. There's 17 pages. I'll put the link in the comment section below. I am just sure there are lots of nuggets in here if you are uh, really serious about this space. I think this is a survey that you'll enjoy getting into. Uh, it's full of great information. I just want to keep the video moving though, so I'll put the link in the comment section. All right, SBI virtual currency site. We know that they're open. That came on July 18th. Everybody's just wondering, so really, how's it going? How long did it take to open up the account? Well, somebody was very, very kind and quite detailed in uploading every single step it took for them to open their account and get uh, to be able to uh, trade live. So according to this user, and he just unbelievable how detailed it is. Here's his postcard that he receives back to um, verify his identity. And then here is an actual photograph of the uh, bank transfer for the funds. And he does a lot of screenshots of the actual process step by step by step by step. So it took this particular individual 11 days from registration to open. And at the very end, he says overall, the process was very simple. Okay, so once you get your account open at SBI VC, how's it going? This is a closer look and it's uh, based on word of mouth. So it is uh, about the reputation that SBI VC trade site has. And it is done through looking at a variety of tweets that users have posted on whether they are happy or not with the SBI VC trade site. And according to this, um, yeah, it's positive. It's real positive. The, in, it talks in the article that the rumor in the neighborhood was that this SBI site was going to open soon. That, that rumor started in 2017. And then finally, in July 2018, it opened. And they opened with XRP, BTC, and B Bitcoin Cash. There's no leverage trading. We know that. And uh, it does say, according to this one, they're, t they're talking about Ethereum is scheduled to be added in uh, this year, 2018. So the positive points are that it has great phone support. Uh, you can connect quickly. The staff is kind. Uh, it's also a plus that it's linked to the, to the uh, Shumishin SBI net bank. It has good liquidity. Uh, they really believe that the Ripple Asia partnership is a plus, and they really have a lot of trust in SBI because um, they believe that SBI is very compliant. Now, the only negative on one of these tweets was in reference to the price. It's this one here. And there is a comparison about BitBank. And BitBank, of course, is the one that's doing a zero fee campaign right now to the end of September. So there was a little bit of a, you know, sweat, sweat. It's a little more expensive than I was used to. But overall, the reputation of the site is very good. All right, I want to take you to here. I did a little bit of a collage. These are the ads out there on the internet to attract customers to come to their platforms. And the top one here is BitTrade. BitTrade is promoting their FX trading in addition to 
um, virtual currencies. They claim that they are safe. They also kind of tell everyone, hey, we have MonaCoin. MonaCoin is very popular in Japan. And then they have some 500 yen Amazon coupon special. Here is DMM. They are the most aggressive when it comes to advertising. They are doing a blanket campaign in every medium possible from trains to billboards to digital screens in the busy parts of town, print advertising all over the web, and they will give you 5,000 yen, about 50 bucks back if you open up a new account with them. They have margin trading. Then you have GMO, GMO coin. They are really popular for people who love to do leverage trading. They have a 25 uh, X leverage trading option. And here is BitBank. This is the exchange that has the number one volume of XRP in Japan. And this has been their campaign now for a couple of months. It runs, like I said, to the end of September and it's a zero fee campaign. Here is SBI virtual currencies promotion that you'll see out there. And it's um, an ad that promotes their opening, which just, of course, went live to the public on July 18th. And then there's this that you see out there quite often. Strange, huh? What do you think? We have this Bitcoin, of course, and then we have the Triskillian logo by Ripple with this what coin in the middle? What is that? Let me show you. This is Fusion Coin. Fusion Coin was started by Kenji Mano. He is the CEO. There you go. Uh, he's a businessman who was focused on virtual currency since 2012 when awareness of Bitcoin was still low in Japan. And his friend, uh, he says, of uh, he's a friend of Roger Veer, the American businessman who is said to have brought Bitcoin to Japan. And then entrusted by Chris Larson, president of Ripple at that time, in August of 2013, he oversaw the initial sales of Ripple in Japan. And now he has formed Fusion Partners LLC with Akihiku uh, Matsuyama. And here is Akihiko Matsuyama, he's a COO, he was born in 1980, founder of several private companies and corporations in Japan and overseas. He met Kenji Mano in 2012 and oversaw the growth of Ripple in Japan from 2014. Participated in the founding of Fusion Partners LLC uh, in 2015. So this coin, Fusion coin, uh, basically takes the attributes of Bitcoin, which they believe is the fact that it's limited, and the attribute of Ripple, which is the payment system. And then they took what they believe are the two best things of the two best coins, put it together and made Fusion Coin. It's limited to 30 million and yeah, I don't know. Um, they just redid their website on August 1st, so they're still really trying. It's, a, it's an altcoin. I think it still has a ways to go in terms of its adoption and growth, but I just wanted to uh, bring that to your awareness because their ads are still all over uh, on the internet. Okay, GMO, GMO, GMO coin. We saw one of the ads in that collage I did. They're a uh, very, um, well, the biggest thing they've got going here is they've got a new miner that's a uh, mining rig that's coming out like in October. And yeah, it's going to go head to head with the bit main um, miner now. So I'm very interested in this story, but this that's that's for another day. So this one, GMO Azora 
NetBank, and Dynamics introduced Japan's first battery-powered interactive debit and cash card. And I was like, wow, this, came, this article came out on the 9th. I was like, what in the heck is this? Well, this is some really amazing technology. So this is a credit card, but it's also a debit card. You just push a button which way you want to go. So if you want to use it as a credit card, you can push the credit. If you want to change it to debit, just push the debit button. You know, there are 20 billion cards out there in the world, and that's growing 5% every year. Um, the company Dynamics got a $70 million round of investment from MasterCard. So not only does it have this um, ability to move with a push uh, to go from credit to debit, but it has an on-off switch as well, and it's password protected. Can you imagine? I mean, it's password protected on the card. You put your password in by pushing the buttons. And inside, it has a cell phone chip. It has 100 electrical parts, yet it's completely waterproof, so it can go through the wash. It has organic charging. And the connectivity works in 210 countries. And it can also receive and send messages. Um, messages. So, you know, let's just say, for example, the bank knows it's your birthday. You might get a message that says, uh, happy birthday, Eddie. And you have $5 in your account. We want to wish you happy birthday. So it has the ability to send you live messages from the uh, issuer. So your issuer is totally connected to you all the time. The issuing banks can really get close to their customers. I think in terms of branding uh, and uh, the ability to um, grow your relationship, this is just kind of unbelievable. Uh, it was a jaw-dropping kind of, oh my gosh, when I saw this. You don't even have to worry about if you lose it. If you lose it, the card's turned off. It's no problem. And if you do have the card and you need to renew it, it's okay. You don't have to get a new card. You just um, hit the download. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, it's amazing. And it can, it, it even keeps track of royalty points so that if you want to pay with your points, it, you know, the merchant doesn't know if you're going to use your points instead of using your debit or your credit. Uh, so it has this am amazing flexibility. Yeah, I just think technology today is getting so exciting. I love it. All right, everybody. Now, here comes your fluff story, which is uh, about technology from Japan. This is Ibo. Ibo is a dog that was made by Sony. And of course, it is an AI dog. And Ibo loves to be loved. He has uh, likes and dislikes. He's programmed with a camera inside. So from that camera, he actually has the ability to recognize people. Uh, he learns from his environment. He has over one hundred. No, he's got more than that. He's got hundreds of gestures. And you can also teach him new tricks and gestures. Also, there's a little bit of unpredictability programmed inside. So each Ibo is different. There's no two that are alike. And if you um, spend lots of time with it, your time then modifies its behavior. It has the ability to recognize not only people, but also it can take the shortest route to um, where it's going. It, it learns. Uh, it can recognize um, obstacles. Yeah, it loves pink, so it has toys. Ibo costs about 
three thousand U.S. dollars. My friend in Nagano just bought one two weeks ago, and she is. Uh, I haven't talked to her since she she opened up the her box, but uh, I'm just so looking forward to finding out what she thinks if she thinks it is uh, close to having a real dog. I don't know. I have four cats. I am not sure how my cats would respond to Ibo, but uh, Ibo even has a voice recognition. There is just one part of Ibo that is a little bit maybe creepy for me. Ibo keeps records of everything and it everything that it experiences in day-to-day -day life and it uploads that data to a cloud and creates a database of memories that you can browse with the uh, my ibo app and you can even ask ibo to take a picture and you'll be able to preserve that moment for posterity posterity sorry i don't know it's just that whole uploading all of that in terms of your life records to a cloud is just, I think for me, maybe a little, well, I'm not sure. How do you feel? So I, I think if, um, I think if, I think I'd like to try Ibo. Yeah, I would like to try Ibo. And I think I'm sure there's some parts of Ibo that are really fun. but I'm still on the fence. <laughs> I don't know, how do you feel? Uh, that's all I have for you today. So, oh, I was just gonna say, Ibo has a like a $30 monthly fee that keeps you updated with all of the new programming. So my friend said, yeah, it's just like buying dog food, but instead of dog food, I'm just buying uh, updates funny. All right. That's it. Everybody have a great uh, day, morning, evening, wherever you are. And I uh, say sayonara for now. Bye-bye.